Ranger. Fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty Hayo Silver. The Lone Ranger. Hayo Silver! Away! With his faithful Indian companion Tonto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains, led the fight for law and order in the early West. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. The Lone Ranger rides again. a fine-looking hand. Homer. Welcome to the West, Homer. I discovered nothing in our transaction that warrants your familiarity. In future, you will kindly refer to me as the Honorable Homer Virgilius Potts, senior member of the New York law firm of Potts, Peabody, Potts, and Potts. You Potts need some pans in your outfit. <laughs> that, I presume, is the provincial conception of a humorous remark. Well, when one is obliged to descend to the level of savages, one must be prepared to endure their curious customs. That level you talk about, mister, is no lower than the opinion I'm getting to you. Madam, will you please hand me my key? Summons the porter to carry my luggage. Now, look -a here, Homer. Every hombre that bunks here totes his own bindle. Would it be too much to ask you to translate that into English? Why, you stop, polecat, you! Take this key and bamboos before I ventilate your britches with my scatter gun. Savage. Howdy, Ma Hank. Well, Sydney Powers, I haven't seen you in a month of Sundays. No, Dad and I have been mighty busy at that ranch. I've been sniffing the breeze for them orange blossoms till my nose give out. I thought you and Marshal Jim had tied the knot long ago. Well, we would have, Ma, but there's been so much trouble at the ranch. I'm afraid Dad's going to lose his spread if we don't raise money enough to buy land with a steady flow of water. Our own creek's gone bone dry. Oh, I didn't realize things could get as tough as that. But maybe our luck's about to take a turn. I've got an uncle with loads of money. He wrote that he'd be coming in from New York today. Um. His name wouldn't be Homer, I hope. Yes, that's it. You don't mean you've seen him. Seen him? I almost clobbered him. Such a persnickety critter I never met. You say he's a kin of yours? Well, Uncle Homer is a trifle high hat, but maybe the West will change all that. Change Dad and me. Maybe snakes will grow hair. Where is he? Madam? Madam, there are no sheets on my bed. As the feller says, Homer, sheets are for dead men. Howsomever, it's my opinion that you're gonna need one if you don't get down off of your fancy high horse. <sighs> oh. oh, Uncle Homer. Not now, young man. Can't you see that I'm... Bi Did you say Uncle Homer? Lucinda. But... But this absurd masculine attire, to think that a niece of mine should abandon all sense of propriety. Such, I suppose, is the effect of this barbaric environment. You're just prejudiced, Uncle Homer. Wait till you've seen the West. My dear child, I've already seen more than enough. It's a den of lawless iniquity. I wasn't in town five minutes before one of the local savages discharged a pistol, knocking off my hat. Oh, that's nothing to get upset over. These car folks just can't keep from plugging a high hat. Oh, come on, Uncle Homer. Where's your sense of humor? I'm returning to New York and civilization by the first coach out of here. Oh, but, Uncle Homer, Dad and me have been counting on you. Without your help, we'll lose a ranch. Probably the best thing that ever happened to you. And I won't need the sheets. Ma, Hank, what am I going to do? Well, now, just sit down. It'll break Dad's heart if we have to lose the ranch. Now, now, there, dearie, just quit fretting. You just leave everything to Ma. Mm -hmm. I'll fix it so your Uncle Homer can't leave town. 
And if my plan works, your Uncle Uppity Nose will be needing your help bad. But how? Well, now, you just leave everything to me. Come on. Get in your buckboard and go on home. And on the way home, stop off at the jailhouse and tell Marshal Jim and I want to see him pronto. All right. And uh, don't let him start romancing you. Because this scheme calls for clear heads and feet on the ground. We go to Modoc City, Kimisani. Yes, Tuttle. The Treasury Department's representative who contacted me in Houston asked me to get in touch with Marshal Jim in Modoc City. You think this have to do with Billy B. Hung and his gang of train robbers? Well, I wouldn't be at all surprised. Even though Billy B. Hung and his men have been caught and jailed, there's still some mystery about the money they stole in their last holdup. I'm sure Marshal Jim could tell us all about it. Well, what do you think of the scheme, Marshal Jim? <laughs> uh, you sure come up with some Lulu's, Ma. I gotta hand it to you. That's the funniest idea I ever heard. <laughs> well, come on, show me this hombre's room. Let's go. <laughs> I only hope I can keep a straight face. <laughs> Open up. Uh, who is it? This is the law. The law? Open up, I said. Just a moment. All right, you're under arrest. What? And don't try anything, Doc. Doc? But, Marshal, you're making a gross mistake. I am the Honorable Homer Virgilius Potts. You're I... Doc Bogus. That's who you are, king of the counterfeiters. The answer the wanted descriptions right down to the highfalutin talk. Madam, will you please inform this officious public servant who I am? You're the fellow that said there wasn't any law in the West. Marshal, I implore you, if you will contact my brother-in-law... Get dressed. But... Get dressed! Or do you want to be marched down the main street to the pokey in your nightshirt? Well, I... Excuse me, madam. Delighted. This will be your new home for a while, Doc. But then I guess it's not the first time you've seen the inside of a cell. Well, Marshal, who's in a prisoner? You mean you don't recognize him? Oh. Well, that's Doc Bogus, ace counterfeiter. Why, that's the most... He's so good at making bad money, they named it all after him. Doc Bogus, huh? Yeah, yeah, sure, I've heard about you. Marshal, listen to me. For the last time, Marshal. Relax, Doc. This pokey could be worse. Please, sir, you must believe me. I am an innocent man. <laughs> sure, sure, we're all innocent here. <laughs> Relax, Doc. The law is gone. You can drop it now. My name's Billy B. Hung. Him? That's Garvey. Him? His name's Vince. Howdy, Doc. Gentlemen, despite the preposterous contention of the Marshal, I am the Honorable Homer Virgilius Potts. And I have... <laughs> I have a law office in Wall Street. Oh, Doc, they told me how you could spot them words. Well, but you I... don't have to put no show on for us. I see that it's useless to try to convince you. Very well. I shall meditate on ways and means of gaining my liberty. <laughs> <laughs> well, what do you think? Huh? Hey, Doc. Didn't quit worrying about trying to beat this jug. We're all set to bust out tonight. I don't comprehend. Oh, it's simple. You see, I had a couple of hacksaw blades sold in my boots when they captured us. <laughs> I practically saw it through them bars, so tonight, Doc, out we go. But breaking jail is a serious felony. Now, as an attorney, let me call oh, you. Oh, Doc, I... Doc. Fun's fun, but let's not wear it out, huh? Now, we need you. We need your services for our special job. My services? Right. That's right. That's right. Now, look. We've been busting our brains trying to figure what to do with the gold we stole from our last job. Now, the marshal didn't know it. But he did us a big favor when he pulled you in. But I... Ah, oh, look, all you have to do is to melt down a couple of hundred thousand dollars worth of gold coins, remove the alloy so we can sell the bullion. Yeah, we got the loot cashed in the old Rio Oro mine. We get everything you need. We get crucibles, quicksilver, the whole works. But I'm not Doc Bogus. I don't want to break out, and I will not participate in the commission of a crime. Doc, you ever hear how I got my name? Of course not. Well, it was, it was when I was just a little runt in Crabtree Springs. My old man said about me, you know, he's so mean, I bet Billy be hung before he sprouts a beard. <laughs> you know, that handle stuck with me ever since. <laughs> I've been shaving a lot of years, but no rope has ever stretched this neck a lot. 
I guess old Pappy was kind of wrong in his calculations. Uh, except for one thing. What was that? Well, you see, Doc, I'm still plenty mean. Especially when I don't get things my way. So, Doc, whether you like it or not, you're, you're coming along. Oh. Atta boy. Well, the way he carried on, I thought he'd bust a blood vessel. Now, let him simmer overnight in the clink. Come morning, he'll be so all-fired glad to see Cindy and her pa when they come to claim him that... What's that? Well, great day! Good evening, Mrs. Hank. Why, Mr. Antonto! Well, it's sure good to see you gents again. Marshal Jim. Uh, well, set you down. It won't take me but a minute to make a fresh pot of coffee. Thank you, Mrs. Hank. Well, Jim, I understand you have some serious business for Tonto and me. That's right, mister. As you probably know, in their last holdup, Billy B. Hung and his bandits took $200,000 worth of gold pieces belonging to a South American republic who'd sent the money to Denver for minting. But bandits in jail now, Marshal Jim. Well, that's right, Tonto, but the money hasn't turned up. Now, the bandits couldn't have passed it, so they must have hid it before their capture. If that gold isn't recovered, it can lead to serious international complications for our government. I've tried every way I know to make those owl hoots admit where they hid that gold. Uh, but their lips are sealed clam tight. We'll have to devise some method of unsealing them. Well, keep your shirt on, goodness sake. What is it, Leigh? Ma, where's the marshal? I've got to see him right away. Hey, that's my deputy. Yeah, what's up? Marshal, the train robbers broke jail. Cleared out. Doc Bogus with them. What? Great heavens! They stole some horses from the livery stable and headed west out of town. Lay if you round up some men, we'll take out after him and tell Cindy she'll want to come with us. You heard? Yes. What about Doc Bogus? Last time I heard of him, he was behind bars. Well, he still is. Well, I had a plan, and Jim here arrested his best girl's uncle and claimed he was Doc Bogus. Oh, we didn't mean any harm by it. It was just a fool scheme to try and help out Cindy and her pa. Now look. Now don't blame yourself, Marshal. You couldn't have anticipated such development. Oh, if anything ever happens to him, I'll never forgive myself. And it's up to us to see that nothing does happen. You go ahead and organize your posse. Tonto and I'll ride out and see if we can pick up their trail. Right. Poor Uncle Homer. I sure made a now hoot out of him. Wait a minute. Now what's the matter? My posterior is aching. Come on, come on, Doc. Speak English. Sir, I entreat you. Let me dismount a moment. My flesh is bruised and tormented, and my bones are now pulverized. Look, Doc, we've stopped at least four times to let you rest. Each time we stop gives that posse a chance to get closer to us. All right. All right, but this is positively the last time. Oh, thank you. Thank you, sir. I shall be eternally grateful to you. Yeah, but just, just uh, be quick about it. Huh. Oh. <laughs> well, there goes the horse. Go on after it, Doc. If you lose that animal, you'll be working from here to doomsday. And be careful how you pick your way, because this whole territory is covered with boarded-up mine shafts. Come back here! Do you hear me? Come back, I say! <laughs> halt! I command you! Ah! Hold it. Look. It's at least 150 feet down to the bottom of that mine shaft. Poor duck. What an awful way to go. Poor us, you mean. Now that we lost Doc, we're right back where we started from. Huh. Not quite. We're out of the pokey, aren't we? Come on. Let's head to the mine.
them take the water here, Kim and Sabin, to cover tracks. It's impossible to tell whether they rode upstream or downstream. And what we do? Well, it's nearly daybreak, Tano. We'll separate. You search the banks downstream, I'll go the other way. Marshal Jim and his posse should be catching up soon. Marshal, we just plain lost the trail, that's all. Well, then we'll just have to keep looking until we find it again. We have to meet up with the rest of the posse at Devil's Pass. Well, come on, what are we waiting for? I surrender. What's the use? The very fates conspire against me. Mr. Potts... Uh, False arrest, abducted by hooligans, are joust with death, and now out of nowhere, this new menace. Mr. Potts, if you let me get a word in edgewise, I can assure you I'm no menace, but a friend. Then why the mask? It works for the law. I've had a sample of your Western law, thanks. And give us an opportunity to alter your impression. We need your help, Mr. Potts. My help? How? And locating the whereabouts of Billy B. Hung and his men. If I never see them again, it'll be too soon. Why, it was virtually at the forfeit of my life that I managed to escape their clutches. You'd not only be rendering a service to your community, but to your government as well. Government, eh? All right. They're hiding out in an abandoned mine. The, uh, Rio Ora, I believe they call it. Yes, the mines in the foothills just a few miles away. I'll go there. You mean we'll Ooh. go there? There'll be danger, Mr. Potts. Possibly some shooting. You want to take the chance? The whole danger be hanged. The way I look at it, partner, if I'm going to be heroic in this thing, why do it halfway? All right, let's go. There's the entrance to the mine, Mr. Potts. Down you go. All right. Ready? Certainly. I can't hear a thing, but I'm sure they must be down there. How do you expect to catch them? You'd better go outside and stand guard. Well, good luck. Doc Bogus, say, we all thought you was... Wait a minute. Well, you're no ghost. Say, how'd you find us anyhow? I have an uncanny gift for locating trouble. Where are the others? Why, they're down below. I was standing watch. Guess I fell asleep. Come on, we'll get down and tell the fellas you're here. Now, wait, don't, uh, don't you think that the sight of me might uh, startle them unnecessarily? Sure, Doc. Come on, we'll give him a good surprise. Come on. <laughs> hey, somebody's coming up. They must have heard our voices. I did that. And it's a good thing you did. You saved my life, sir. Say, that's right, I did, didn't I? Take his gun and gun belt while I finish tying him. Yes. Sir. 
somehow you don't seem to suit me anymore. <laughs> when I heard voices, I came up here to investigate, thinking you'd run into trouble. By the looks of things, Mr. Potts, you're well equipped to handle trouble. Don't you worry about me, partner. Now you get down and round up those other two and I'll ride herd on this hombre. I figure we got enough grub stashed back there to feed us for a month. How about getting a little shut-eye, huh? That's a good idea. Get your hands up, both of you. Give yourself up, Billy. You think you can make me? Garvey, toss me that gun. I wouldn't try that, Garvey. I'm coming after you, Billy. Garvey! Howdy, Mr. Behang. I mean, Behung. Come on, get over there. Don't you fret, mister. Potts has Billy Behung under control. Well, I'll be jiggered. Uncle Homer, are you all right? Right as rain water, Cindy, as the feller said. Reckon you can take over now, Marshal. Yeah, I reckon so. Are you hurt, Kimisami? No, Tom. Marshal, you'll find another one down below. You'd better send one of your men after him before he regains consciousness. Your arrival was well-timed, Marshal, but what made you think of coming here to the mine? Well, you signal, of course. I signal? I reckon I'd better explain. You see, when I was a boy, like most boys, I avidly devoured those paperback books about the wild and woolly west. And I remembered, whenever there was trouble and they needed help, they set up smoke signals. So I figured the posse couldn't be too far off, so I lit a little bonfire. And Ma Hank said you were a city slicker, as green as they come. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Uncle Homer, I'm awfully sorry you had to be subjected to such a terrible experience. Terrible? What's terrible about it? We rounded up the owl hoots, didn't we? And how about the gold? Well, that's rounded up too, Mr. Potts. Marshal, you'll find it down there. But you missed your coach back to New York. And there won't be another one for a week. So? You don't mean, after all that's happened, you're, you're gonna stay? Well, I think that my law office would seem pretty tame to me now. Besides, this masked stranger pointed out to me that lawyers are needed out west to prosecute men like that Billy be hung. Oh, go Homer. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, don't you fret, Cindy. If your pa needs money, he may count on me. We'd better get moving, Tonto, if we want to reach Clarkville by sundown. Adios, miss. Bye. Say, Marshal, I'd sure like to have you tell me who that masked hombre is. Well, as long as you've decided to settle down among us barbarians, I'd say he's the kind of Westerner you'd do well to pattern yourself after. He's a Lone Ranger. The Lone Ranger. Fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty Hayo Silver. The Lone Ranger. Hayo Silver! Away! With his faithful Indian companion Tonto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains, led the fight for law and order in the early West. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. The Lone Ranger rides again. Yes, sir. Rugged Gap is only six months old. But we're looking forward to living in a real thriving metropolis. <laughs> it's going to be a great town. When I moved in here, let's see, where did I put my pencil and pad? 
When I moved in, we only had 14 residents. Now we got 180 souls. And I want to tell you, my friend, more of them coming in every day. Well, at least why it's every month. Of course, that's grown-ups I was referring to. We got a lot of young'uns here, too. Last count, had 27 of them. I would be surprised that... Oh, hello. That's young Tommy Ryder. Got himself a new pony. Rides it real good, too. Say, he sure don't look very happy. Him look mad. Come here, boy. Well, what's got into you? Well, Tommy, what's eating you? I don't care what they do. I'm not going to school. Oh, so that's it, huh? They're getting ready to start a school, and you've decided you're not going, huh? Well, seems to me you're a mighty little tight to be making up your mind that way. I may be little, but I'm the man in our house since my father went and died. I've been hunting and fishing, and I'm putting in some field corn. You don't need book learning for that. I might go and eat if my ma is the teacher. Injun, you look like a hunting and fishing man. What do you think about book learning? Indian have writing. White man have writing. Why is this Indian, why is this white man best readers and writers? There you see, I told you. Shucks. They got a school board meeting over at my house right now. They got $4,000 all laid out on the table. Money to build a new school building. I bet they'll build it right where the kids were playing duck on a rock. I tell you, me and Scoots aren't going to school. Sonny, I think you need a little sweetening up. Come here, boy. That's all right. Come on here, Scoots. Help yourself. Uh, take another one for your dog. Lou, us kids has been dead set again, Schooler. Yeah, I guess we was wrong, Jeb. <laughs> $4,000 will be a nice diploma just for attending the school board meeting. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and you know them Indians up in the hills, they're gonna be right surprised when they're accused of pulling off a robbery. <laughs> now that was real nice of Tommy Ryder to mention about the money. We ought to get him a little gift. Yeah. You know, Jim, sometimes I think you're just about the kindest man I know. <laughs> Sometimes I can hardly believe it. Raising all this money so our children can have a school. People in the town, the miners in the hills, all these people contributing. Even the Indians are trying to help. They sent down some furs to sell. I understand they're going to send some of their children to school, too. As our first teacher, you could have your hands full. <laughs> oh, I'm certain I can handle it, Deacon. I've already laid out the courses of study. I think I can prove to my son Tommy that school is a good idea. Right now, he thinks he's the man of the house. <laughs> well, we'll have the lumber brought in right away. And then the carpenters will start... Get building. him up! Why, you? Put that back! Why, you're a disgrace to your people! Give me that thing! Oh. You all right, Ma? I I'm all right, Tommy. Why, you scoundrel! What do you mean by coming in here and taking the church away? Tommy! Tommy! Tommy, come back here! Tommy! He's going after the Indians on his pony. We've got to get to the sheriff. Yes, let's get to the sheriff. Sheriff! Here, here I am. Robbery, Indians, the school's money. Two of them, they came right in. Isn't and... Tommy chasing them? Yes, Indians. It was just like they knew the money was there. Uh, you said Indians? Yes. And they acted like they knew it was there? Yes. Well, Tommy was talking about that money right in front of that Indian who was in the store. What? Yes, I tell you, I saw them. And I... He... There's the one, Sheriff. You. That's him right there. You there, Indian. You. You there, Indian. I want to talk to you. Where have you been for the past half hour? Uh, me eat supper. I don't think this is one of them, Sheriff. Besides, we saw them right out on the South Trail, and Tommy followed them. He's the one who told the others. The storekeeper said he knew about the money. But just plain as the nose on your face, he planned it. I always say you can't trust these tribes. They're thieving. Me not steal. Me not steal ever. Start marching, Engine. I'm going to lock you up till you decide to talk.
We've got to find Tommy. We'll organize a posse right away. But trailing those Indians at night won't be easy. Keep moving. I want to tell you something. If anything happens to Tommy right... <laughs> So me come fast, Kimisami, like wind. The robbery is bad, Tano, but it's doubly bad that two red men should bring disgrace to their brothers. You say a little boy follow the thieves? Uh, thieves ride out South Trail. Me hear that little boy follow them. Uh, he's very brave, but a very foolish little boy. Tano, it looks like we have a job to do. <laughs> Look there. This trail we follow, Kimisabi, like me say before, Indian horse not wear shoe. This white man horse. That's right, Tano. Do you suppose that... Maybe white man rest like Indian. There are pony tracks on top of other sign. That means Tommy is still following the thieves. It'll be daylight soon. That means we can follow the trail more easily. We'll... Tano, listen. Many riders come. Well, hide behind those trees. I'll lead the horses off while you brush out the tracks. One scout. Sheriff's posse from town, Kimisame. Them follow robbers, too. made our job a lot harder than it was. The trail we've been following has almost been obliterated. Well, we'll do the best we can. This is where they turned off. Evidently, the sheriff didn't notice. The posse continued on. Uh, but boy noticed, Kimisabe. Him follow right behind. That posse will never find us. All we have to do is wash up, change clothes, and ride back to town. <laughs> you know, we might even join up and help hunt the two thieving engines who stole all of that money. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> you know, Jeff, we might even put out a reward for catching. <laughs> Stop us spending our money. <laughs> yeah, give me that. I'm gonna go get the rest of this stuff off of my face. <laughs> I'm sure gonna buy me a new pair of britches. get a new pair of britches. Me, I'm going to get a new gun. Yes, sirree. I'm going to get me the straightest shooting gun in this county. That's Jeb and new kids. You know something, Jeb? I might get me a new gun. You do that, and we'll have a shooting match. I always was better than you. Since when? You remember that time in Topeka? <laughs> I sure outshot you then. Listen, I outshot you before I was born. You couldn't hit nothing with grape shot. You wait till I get me that new gun. I'll crease your hair with a new part. You ain't potting nobody's hair, especially mine. Wait a minute, Jeb, did you hear that? No, just that dumb bird. What do you think about that over and under gun? I don't like it a bit. There you go again. Don't know what you're talking about. 
<laughs> Listen, I heard it again. Okay, let's get back to the pony. <laughs> it's that dog belongs to the rider. Get him, Deb. Come on, Scooch, come on. Boy trailing us, that posse isn't going to give up so easy. Yeah, now listen, kid. You're a member of our gang now. Maybe you can tell us where there's some more money, huh? Yeah. Seems like I heard you say you didn't want to go to school. Join up with us and get to be real successful. <laughs> we didn't go to school and we got four thousand dollars. Yeah. <laughs> I might not want to go to school. I'm not gonna be a robber. Now, is that any way to talk to your new partners? <laughs> Come on, let's go get in the horses. Oh, Jeff. Look. You, you murderers. Scoot. Scoot. Come on. You murderers. Boy, still chasing. Let's just hope he doesn't catch them. No telling what men like that'll do. We've been a cutting across this rock for over an hour. We're never going to be trailed. Let's rest a minute. All right, get the kid down off here. Come on, hurry up. How do you like being a member of our outlaw gang, huh? Oh! <laughs> oh. <laughs> Trying to get away twice in one day. Why, anybody would think you didn't appreciate our hospitality. What's the matter with the ankle? You sprain it? Hurt you bad? Well, it serves you right. Maybe we had an order to go back to Rugged Gap. It's not safe. Oh. You know, Jeb, sometimes I think you're right. Maybe we ought to head to Texas, go down Pecos Way. That's down near the border. Well, that's a long ride. Yeah, but, Jeb, you're forgetting. We're real successful men. We got lots of money. Why, we could ride plush all the way to Texas. You know, sometimes you're real smart. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> we'll take that train just like we was raised in the lap of luxury. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, but we can't take the kid with us. We gotta get rid of him. No, we can't. <laughs> Probably bust his heart right in two to think of parting company with us. Yeah, but it'll <laughs> sure give my shins a rest, believe me. <laughs> well, youngster, looks like you're on your own from now on. Now, we're gonna be gone some short stretch of time, so you take good care of things around here in case Lou and me should ever decide to drop by this way again. Yeah, we <laughs> might at that. <laughs> <laughs> so long, kid. Mind your manners. <laughs> Tommy trailed him. Did a good job, too. 
What I was afraid would happen evidently did happen. The outlaws captured him. It looked like him put up a good fight, Kimisami. We'd better hurry. We have a lot of riding to do. I only hope we're in time to see that nothing happens to the boy. Kimisami, that boy's dog. Come here, fella. Come here, fella. Him name Scoots. Now he's been injured. Looks like a gunshot wound. I don't want to hurt you, boy. We want to help you. We want to find your master. Him scared. He could really help us if he only knew it. I'm sure he knows where Tommy is. Come here, boy. Silver told him what it was we wanted. Sometimes men not so smart as horse. Scoot. Come here, boy. That's a boy. Come on over here. Come on, Scoots. Now let's see that wound. Then we'll have to bandage it, tell him. Now, this Santa Yerba bush, Kim, is on me. These make good medicine. Heal wound plenty fast. Easy, boy. Easy. Meet high. All right, Scoots. Now find your master. Go on, boy. Go on. Scoots, you come back. Tommy, are you all right? You don't have to worry about the mask. I wear this mask to hide my identity from outlaws. I'm going to see that you get home. Home to your mother and safety. I know you. You were in the store. Tell us about the men, Tommy. They were bad. They dressed like Indians, but they're really Jeb and Lou Cates. They stole the money. Do you know where they've gone? A long ways away to Texas. That's a long ride. They said they were going to take a train. They said that now they were rich, they can afford it. Did they say where in Texas? Lou said a place called Pecos. Jed, he's the one with a scar on his face, said it was down near the border. Is it right for me to go home now? Certainly, Tommy. Tana, will you... Me take him home. If the Cates are going to take a train to Texas, that means they're riding to the nearest railroad station. Uh, that be gallop. And they're hours ahead. If Silver and I cut across the hills, we may be able to head them off. You say one of the men had a scar? Yes, sir. Jeb has. I'll follow the Cates while Tano takes you home. Be careful when you get to Rugged Gap. Remember, they think Indians committed this crime. Me be careful, Kimisami. Come on, Tommy. Let's go. Now, now, Mrs. Ryder. Tommy's probably trailing the Indians on foot. Just because his pony came home doesn't mean that... You're just trying to make me feel better. You know Tommy wouldn't send his pony home. You know he isn't all righty. Tommy, oh, Tommy. Where have you been? Are you all right? Everything's all right, Ma. There's a man gone to catch the robbers. Boy's safe now. Me go. And he rescued me, Ma. Him and his partner. But, but he's an Indian. Of course, Ma. It wasn't Indians who held you up. It was really Jeb and Luke Cates. Come, come, boy. I saw the Indians with my own eyes. That's just it. They were made up to look like Indians. Me go now. That's right. You're going right to jail. You all right, Tommy? We lost your trail. Just got home. Sure. It wasn't him. He's a good Indian. I got my own ideas about that, Sonny. He's the one that got away from me out on the street. I got some questions to ask you. I'm certain Tommy's right, Sheriff. Maybe so, ma'am. But he's still an escaped prisoner as far as I'm concerned. Come on, you. Ma, why do things get so mixed up sometimes? What can I do for you? I want to buy me a couple of tickets. Where to? To Texas. 
That's a mighty big state, mister. We're bots in Texas. Give me a couple tickets to Pecos. Hurry it up. I got somebody waiting for me. How much do I owe you? $30, Is that all right? Ought to be real nice down in Pecos this time of year. On your feet. Now get going. I owe you my apologies, Injun, for being so hasty. I should have listened to Tommy. Takes a mighty big man to admit when he's wrong, Sheriff. Who'd ever have thought them two critters would be so low down? Hold up a minute, mask man. You can't leave yet. I sent for Tommy and his mother. It'd break his heart if he found out you'd been here and left without saying hello. Oh, here they are now. See, Ma? It's just the way I told you. This one does wear a mask. And when you said you was, we're going to get, get Jed and Lou, you'd really do it. Come, Tommy. It seems Tommy has a different idea about school. He doesn't want to be like the Cates. He's told me that he wants to have a good education. Yes, sir. I'm going to be a lawman, or a preacher, or a doctor, or a lawn ranger. It doesn't matter what you become when you're grown, Tommy. It's what you do that counts. It's what you have to contribute to the people and to this country. That's going to decide if you're a good American citizen. Sounds like I'm a lucky boy. <laughs> In this country, people want young folks to have a good education. They know the future success and happiness of this country depends upon young folks just like you. Gosh! Tommy, do you realize that someplace in this country, there's a boy just your age who'll be president someday? Gosh, president? That's right. Bye, Tommy. Mrs. Ryder. Adios, Sheriff. Gosh, Ma, do you really think president? Maybe, Tommy. Well, I don't see any reason why you wouldn't make an excellent president. What have you got in your hand, Tommy? He gave it to me when he shook hands. A silver bullet. You know, Tommy, about your getting to be president, it wouldn't surprise me if the Lone Ranger is right. I don't know. horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty Hyo Silver, the Lone Ranger. Hyo Silver, away! With his faithful Indian companion Tonto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains, led the fight for law and order in the early West. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. The Lone Ranger rides again. as the Lone Ranger and Tonto rode through the night toward the mission of their old friend, the Padre. Signs of drought lay heavy on the land. Well, Tonto, another dry water hole. It looks as though the things we've heard about the valley are true. Me never see drought here in Mission Valley before, Kimisami. Usually much rain. Yes, Tonto. That's why a prolonged dry spell like this causes much suffering to the farmers. They're unprepared for it. Padre seemed worried in last letter. I don't blame him, Tonto. He loves this land and these people. I only hope we may be able to help him. You have plan, Kimisami? Well, I have a theory. It might not work, but it's certainly worth trying. Look here. These water holes are fed by an underground spring. Even in the driest of times, the dirt at the bottom feels slightly moist. Ah, me see. It probably would be impossible for a man to reach the springs by digging. But dynamite properly used 
Might blast into the underground reservoirs. Let me understand. But where we get dynamite, Kimasemi? The last time we were here, the Padre took us to meet a friend of his. A miner, remember? Ah, uh, man named Jose. He told me he used dynamite in his work for years. I'm sure he'll be able to help us. He didn't seem like a good man, Kimasemi. It might be best for you to go directly to Jose and ask for his cooperation. You should be there by dawn. I'll ride on to the mission and meet you there later. Me, Savvy. And so we come again to thee for aid. And without the rains that give us life and make our lands green, we are lost, little mother. And in our desperation, some of us may resort to evil deeds. Some of us may covet things that are not ours. Some of us may forget God. Oh, do not let that happen to us. Help us, little mother. What do you want? A chalice. No! 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 Hokey. Mother of God, Padre, Padre! Oh. Oh. For years we have prayed to the Mother of God that our valley would always have water. We have always kept the chalice there to show our gratitude. Now the drought has come upon us. Our chalice has been taken away. It means, I think, that our faith is being tested. It may even mean, Maria, that if we keep our faith now, perhaps better things than we have ever had before shall come to us. Oh. Now, try to remember everything. Tell me all about the men who stole the chairs. Oh. Come, Maria. It's really something, isn't it? And when I was a kid, before I ran away from the valley, I used to sneak into church sometimes. I just stand there, staring at this baby, aching to get my hands on it. I don't blame you. I never forgot it. Back in territorial prison, I'd wake up at night, sweating all over it for fear somebody else would lift it before I could get back here. What do you figure it's worth? Enough money to put us on easy street for the rest of our lives. It belonged to the King of Spain once. He gave it to the mission over 100 years ago. Heavy. This wood base comes off. No use lugging that around. Hold steady. I think I felt it give a little. Try it again. Good. Now we ought to be able to... Wait a minute. What's this? What's what? It's a map. Yeah, sure. But a map of what? Whoever made it didn't even... Shut up a minute. Reno, Judd. How would you like to have more money than you could spend in five lifetimes? What are you talking about? I'm talking about the lost treasure of Mission Valley. Lost treasure? Listen to me. When the King of Spain gave that cup to the mission, he also gave enough gold, enough silver, enough everything to take care of the people in the valley for generations to come. But to keep it safe, the first padre must have buried everything except that cup somewhere in the hills. Do you think... I always heard there was a map around somewhere. Hokey, you live in the valley. These lines aren't marked. But, but you ought to be able to recognize them anyway. Well, it could represent in any one of a hundred places. A mountain range, a valley, a, a riverbed. That X could mark some kind of a rock projection, but... What about the words at the top? That must be the name of the mountain range. El Lobo. That means the wolf in English, I think, but... Doesn't tell us anything. There's no range around here by that name now. Must have been changed years ago. What's this? These words, what do they mean? I don't know. I don't read Spanish that good. Well, that's just dandy. What do we do now? Go back and ask the Padre to translate? No. No, we'll go up in the hills to see an old miner by the name of Jose. I heard he lives in the same place. Oh, yes. And he reads Spanish. Dawn will be great and soon. Let's go. Ooh. 
Remember me, Jose? I think I do, senor. Hokey Carter, isn't it? Right, Hokey Carter. All grown up now. Your father was a good man. I... Tell me, Jose. Ever heard of a mountain range around here by the name of El Lobo? El Lobo? Why, yes. That is the name the first Spaniards gave to the Sawtooth Range. But why? Sawtooth? The mountains to the west? That is correct. Oh, that does it. Let's go. Wait a minute. What about those four phrases at the bottom of the map? Yeah, that stuff could be important. Here. Take a look at this. Senores, this is very ancient. Just translate, old timer. Well, these words refer to verses of the Bible. The first one reads uh, Isaiah 19, verse 5. The second, Exodus 33, verse 22. The second, or the next one, is uh, Proverbs 26, verse 27. And the last is Psalm, Psalms 1 to 1, verse 1. Where did you get this map? That's our business, old timer. Well, we're no better off than we were. No. We'd have to have a Bible to figure that out. I have a Bible, but... Uh... Get it. I said get it. Senor, the chalice. You have robbed the mission. Get that Bible. I pity you. I pity you for what you have done, for the curse you have brought on your head. Here it is, Hockey. Here. It's the Isaiah 19.5. What's wrong? It's written in Spanish. Spanish? All right, Jose. Translate, starting with Isaiah 19.5. You have found the map, haven't you? You think you're going to get the lost treasure. Well, you're wrong. The treasure belongs to the police. Oh, uh, freedom! Shut. Come on, let's drop gun. Drop gun. Seems like I've seen an engine somewhere before. Never mind about that. Let's get out of here. How about those Bible verses, Hokey? We don't need them now. Now that we know the treasure's in the sawtooth range, we can follow the map to the right spot. Want me to get rid of the engine? Might as well. Wait a minute. We're not using our heads. That treasure's been buried for over a hundred years now. We need all the manpower we can get to dig it out. Now, the Indian looks strong. We'll take him with us. Keep your eye on him. You're the boss, Hokey. Wait a minute. Now, Jose did a lot of mining. Always used dynamite. Can we find out where he kept it? Sure, it might come in real handy. Here it is. We'll take the whole thing. Pick up the Indian. Tie him on his horse. What about the old man? Forget him. He's dead. I sure wish I could remember where I seen this engine. Come on, Judge. We're wasting time. right to the mission. You say the woman Maria was unable to identify any of the men, Padre? It happened so quickly. She was stunned, you understand. Of course. But she was able to remember that one of the thieves called the other Hokey. Hokey? Does that mean something to you, my friend? It may mean a great deal. About a month ago, three men escaped from the territorial prison. Everyone assumed they'd fled to Mexico. One of them, the leader, had been born in this valley. His name is Hokey Carter. Carter? Yes, I know his parents. I'll start on his trail at once. However, the drought has made the ground extremely hard. It doesn't take tracks the way it ordinarily would. I know you will do your best, my friend. I'm sure you realize what the chalice symbolizes to my people. I do indeed. And I have the profoundest regard for their feelings. As you know, Padre, I have close friends in every religious faith, and I respect each of them equally. I believe that the paths to God have many beginnings, but each of them has the same destination. Well, adios, Padre. When Tonto arrives, I would tell him where you have gone. Padre! Padre! Oh. Padre! 
José. Oh, I found them in the courtyard. Maria, get some bandages. Oh, padre. Si, padre. The chalice, I have seen it. There were three men. They came to the house. One was Jorge Carter. Oh, amigo, you're here. We must go after them. In time, Jose. But you do not understand. They have found the map. The map, Padre, to the lost treasure. What? A battle with him. There was a shot. When I came to my senses, I saw that Tonto had... Uh... Tonto was there? Here are the bandages, senor. Thank you, Maria. Go on, Jose. Uh, Tonto must have heard the shot. He was overpowered. I lay there as though dead, watching. I saw them take him away to help him dig for the treasure. Where did the men go after they left your cabin, Jose? They rode west. They said the treasure was buried somewhere in the Sawtooth Range. But the Sawtooth Range covers hundreds of miles, Jose. Tonto's life depends upon whether or not we find him in time. Unless they mention some sort of a clue to their final destination. We're beaten before we've even begun. Let me think. Oh, I'm sorry. I only saw a small part of the map. Just a few words. Words? Oh, nothing, nothing important, amigo. No directions. Just a few f Spanish phrases referring to verses of the Bible, that's all. A pious custom of the old days, my friend. Jose is right, it probably means nothing. I'm not so sure, Padre. A hundred years ago, most of the landmarks in this area were known by Indian names. The Padre who made that map might not have been familiar with them. You believe that he made identified his landmarks through biblical quotations? It's a possibility, Jose. You said there were a number of such phrases. You have a good knowledge of the Bible. What was the first of them? What was it? Genesis, no. Isaiah, Isaiah 19, verse 5, I think. Yes. 19th chapter, 5th verse. And the water of the sea shall be dried up, and the river shall be wasted and dry? I do not understand. There's no sea in the South Tooth Range. Perhaps it refers to a riverbed. Of course, a riverbed. Something which once held water and was already wasted and dry a hundred years ago. The old Rio Moraga, Padre. Yes, yes. What was the second phrase, Jose? I cannot remember, senor. You must remember, Jose. Try. I must remember. I can see it in my mind's eye, but, but what? Exodus. Exodus 33, verse 22. That's it. I will set thee in a hole of the rock and protect thee with my right hand. A hole of the rock. My friend, you know the old Rio Moraga as well as I. Do you recall the place where the narrow point of the rock goes right down into the riverbed? Yes, I've ridden past it many times. The next place, Jose. The next. Oh, Padre. You've done fine, Jose. I believe we have all the information we need, Padre. If the map itself leads Carter further beyond the Rio Moraga rock, I'm sure I can pick up his trail. Let me go with you. You're wounded, Jose. I'm strong, amigo. Oh, he might need help, Padre. If he does, my son, I'm sure he will receive it. Keep digging, engine. I may need water. <laughs> Is that right? I said, keep digging. Hey, you are, Judd. I couldn't have met that engine in prison. Maybe it was in Texas. Give me a hand here. I sure hope you picked the right spot to blast. If we waste all that dynamite... Look, you I... saw the map. Now we follow the riverbed right down to the rock projection, just like it said. Right down to where the X was marked. Now stop worrying and get this dynamite planted. All right, engine. That's deep enough. You can... Tonto! What? Tonto, that's the engine's name. I just remembered. What do you expect us to do? Give you a medal? Don't you understand? That's the masked man's sidekick. What masked man? The Lone Ranger. The Lone... Are you sure? Sure, I'm sure. He and his masked friend broke up a gang I rode with once in Oregon. I spent five years in prison up there because of those two. Where's your pal? May not know. You'll know when I get through with you. Hold it, in. No, wait a minute. What's the matter with you? We've got to make him talk. With the engine here, the masked man must be around somewhere. He may be on our trail right now. Are you crazy? Why, an elephant wouldn't leave a trail along the ground we've covered. You know, Hokey, Judd may be right. I've heard plenty about that masked man myself. And so have I. But he's a human being. 
and it can be taken care of if we just keep our head. So, what do we do? Like I said, I don't think anybody could follow a trail along the ground we've covered, not even the Lone Ranger. But if we'll make you feel any easier, why don't one of you go back away and set up a lookout post? Not a bad idea. I'll go. And if you hear anybody come and shoot first, and ask questions afterwards. And we'll keep on working here. And shoot straight. Right. Now tie up this engine. We don't want any more trouble from him. You better start saying your prayers, engine. Because I have a hunch your services won't be needed from now on. And you might toss in a prayer for that mask friend of yours, too. Silver, what's wrong, boy? Well, you don't like that blind bend in the trail, do you? Stay here, big fellow. Drop your hands. Now drop your gun. So you were planning an ambush. How could you have found out where we were? How could you have known? That isn't important now. All that matters is... I wouldn't try that again. So your friends are using dynamite in order to find the treasure. Yeah. Is Tano still alive? He was when I left. There's some rope in my saddlebag. I'll tie you up and come back for you later. I'll get going. But that's where the X on the map was marked. The treasure has to be here. But it isn't. I told you we shouldn't have used all the dynamite on one spot. Maybe if we dug a little deeper. Now, hand me that shovel. Well, engine, this looks like the end of the trail. There's no treasure, but we've still got the chalice. And I can't think of a single reason for keeping you around any longer. You all right, Tano? Yeah, all right, Kimis Hemi. Look out, Kimis Hemi! to help you, senor. I should have known you'd not need it. Thanks, Jose. We're third bandit, Kimisami. I met him on the trail coming here. He's tied up waiting for us. We'll pick him up on the way back. It looks though that one waded into a river. Him get wet when him dig in hole, Kimisami. Keep them covered, Tato. I found the map on the wet one's pocket. What is it, amigo? Apparently the theory I had was correct. The blast set off by Carter must have driven into an underground spring. You're right, senor. The water is flowing freely at the bottom. I only hope there's enough water to see everyone in the valley through this dry spell. There's only one thing, senor. That the map was wrong about the treasure. Perhaps there never was a treasure. Of course, we should not be greedy. We have the chalice and the water. It's possible Carter dug in the wrong place. No. The cross on the map plainly indicates the base of the rock at the riverbed. And here the last two phrases I was unable to remember. Proverbs 26, verse 27. And Psalms 1 to 1, verse 1. Psalms 121, verse 1. I know that, Jose. I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills, from whence cometh my help. I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills. Jose, look. The cross, certainly. The X on the map did mean a place to dig, but a place to stand in order to see the cross. 
Come on, Jose. I'll get the shovels. Oh, it is the treasure, senor. It is. Imagine what this means to Arrow Valley. Yes, Jose. Now you'll have schools, hospitals, sea. You'll need many cars to take the treasure to the mission. Imagine the padre's face when we tell him. Imagine! <laughs> oh, it's wonderful. My friends, I cannot thank you enough for what you have done. The people of the valley will be eternally grateful. I hope you'll use the money wisely. You may depend upon that. What will happen to the three robbers, my friend? Tonto and I have made arrangements to have them return to the territorial prison at once. Then probably stay there the rest of their lives. Well, Padre, it's time Tonto and I were on our way. It sounds as though the much-needed rain is coming. You are right. Oh, thanks be to God. God bless you, my friends. And remember, you are always welcome here. Return to us soon. Adios. A remarkable man, Jose. They both are remarkable men. You should have seen them fight the robbers as I did. By the way, Padre, there was one more phrase on that map. Proverbs 26, verse 27. What is that one? The most prophetic one of all, I think. He that diggeth a pit shall fall into it. And that is exactly what happened to the three thieves, thanks to the lone ranger. <laughs> Be with the Lone Ranger and Tonto same time next week for new dangers in another thrill-packed adventure when the Lone Ranger rides again.